I'm pretty sure at this point, after all of my research that I've been doing on this topic, that the Nintendo Switch 2 is pretty much going to be, and Nintendo just in general, the last hope for old school console gaming. And I know that might be a little bit of a weird thing for people to say, like, wait a minute, OJ, hold up. All of this is gaming. We have PlayStation, we have Xbox, but we have all these games that come out on other consoles, other platforms, and why are those not the last hope? Well, I'm gonna get into all of that because there's been a number of things that's just been kind of like grinding at my um, mind when it comes down to console gaming and how I have less and less patience for a lot of the things that are happening in today. And I think it kind of plays a part into some of the issues that we see in today's gaming. We're seeing a severe fatigue of some of the tactics that are being used and a lot of people are playing old games if you haven't seen some of the videos that are out there on youtube there are people that are making you know people are playing old games again old games are doing really good in the algorithm people are watching old content which has always been popular but it's blown up even more because if you look at the past and what old games did Old games had a certain swag, had a certain style, had a certain thing to them. They felt like complete adventures instead of games where you're always anticipating some type of DLC or some type of extra piece of content or some type of other thing that says, okay, you have to wait for this. And I think that's why people are going back to the older games and how they're built. They were built specifically for certain systems and not just these random games that are just put out on everything. They're built for Xbox or they're built for Nintendo GameCube or they're built for the PlayStation 2 and they feel great to play specifically built for those systems. Almost like how Nintendo clearly builds certain games for the Switch you can tell compared to a third party port that was ported over to the platform. Some of the things that I'm talking about here when it comes down to it is the subscription service model. Everybody sees subscription services, but now we're starting to have, you know, big AAA games launch in them and people are getting kind of tired of the subscription service model at this point. Sales are flat across the board, but I think it plays a part into this whole, you know, fatigue, having these huge library of big old games that you don't even have time to play half the time. So the subscription services, the limited physical versions where sometimes you just can't find physical versions of places, it's hard to find them, or you have flat out companies trying to limit physical when it comes to their shipments and everything. You have the installing of games which happened last generation or the eighth generation and it was just one of those things where you just can't like take a game put it in your system and play so i think that's part of it you have the always online aspect of where sometimes even single player games require always online and it's like why or you have these games that yes smart delivery is cool and all but you have to be online in order to get that version of the xbox series game so stuff like that just not a fan drm huge digital pushes i mean we've seen all these different things that to me just kind of zap the fun out of gaming especially when they're done bad now when they're done okay when it comes to an always online game hell divers or whatever the case is that's great but if you can't actually get into the game because they're having server problems that's not so good especially when you bought it full price when it comes to the release of the game so for me a lot of those things have just been kind of pushing me away from some more of the modern games and i'm playing the back catalog i'm playing the type of titles that really harken back to the ps2 days and some of the other you know consoles gamecube and all of that and even like seventh generation games but i do think that this video where i'm kind of encompassing everything how nintendo switch 2 is the last hope for old school console gaming well, it's because of what Nintendo recently had to say. Mr. Furukawa, he talked about Nintendo's policy, which, by the way, if you look at Microsoft, you look at Sony, obviously PC market, you know, it's all digital for the most part. None of them are saying anything like this. They all want you to buy digital. They all have crazy incentives for you to buy digital. Heck, Sony has made it to the point where they made the same system when it comes to the power and everything, and they have or they own the Blu-ray technology, and they docked $100 off of the same PlayStation 5 in order to goat you or bait you into buying an all digital. So it cuts out the middleman, cuts out having the option so they get more of a cut. But I loved what Nintendo had to say here. And this is why I'm saying that they are the last hope. So in a recent investor briefing that we just got, there was a question from an investor. And the question was this, I think one big change over the life cycle of Nintendo Switch is the remarkable growth in digital sales. 
looking back at the progress of the digital business and its contribution to financial results thus far, I would like to know what expectations you have for digital business over the life cycle of the successor to the Nintendo Switch. And here's what Furukawa had to say. As you pointed out, the expanded scale of our digital business can be cited as one of the major changes since the release of Nintendo Switch. In the previous fiscal year, robust sales of Nintendo Switch Online memberships and add-on content for games such as Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, and Splatoon 3, as well as the depreciation of the yen, led to increases in both the digital sales amount and the digital sales ratio. Our objective is to not simply increase the share of digital sales, this is the important part here guys, but to maximize overall game software sales, including sales of physical software. This policy will remain unchanged going forward. Now there is another part here, but I wanna just make sure that I focus on this so you guys can understand because nobody else has said this. Clearly Sony's not saying this. Microsoft wants you to do Game Pass, which is even a step worse than just all digital. It is all digital rental as well. So it's digital that can just be wiped from your library if you don't subscribe. So it's even worse than that. So none of them are saying this because they want you to go all digital. And I'm gonna finish off here, then we're gonna get back to what this means for you and why to me this is such an important statement for Nintendo to make heading into the successor to the Nintendo Switch. In this context, we need to enhance user friendliness for both consumers who play packaged software and those who play downloaded software. Going forward, we intend to keep working on improvements to devise better solutions. Compared to 2017, when the Nintendo Switch was launched, digitalization has progressed in many aspects of our lives. At the moment, if digital content continues to become more useful and convenient over time, we believe that more of our consumers will choose digital products with the successor to Nintendo Switch, just as they did with Nintendo Switch. So that last part is essentially saying they have a 50-50 digital to physical sales ratio, and people are saying that yes, it is convenient. With the Nintendo Switch, it's extremely convenient because it's a hybrid device, so you can take it out, and a lot of people probably don't wanna carry a bunch of cartridges with them when they go out so having digital software or having smaller independent games that you can pick up and play very quickly digital fits really well with the nintendo switch so that's why you see a big boost in digital i also think that nintendo has just had way more digital games release on the nintendo switch than they ever did i think it's not even close when it comes to the dsi and the nintendo 3ds and with the wii u and the wii it's not even close the switch has like more than all those systems combined and then multiple times over so i think there's also that aspect but to get back to this the fact that nintendo's not just saying oh yeah you know digital sales are this or it's this type of thing they're saying hey we want to maximize sales across the board that means find ways for people who do love physical to get physical games so shipping out copies of physical games having special editions doing different things in order to enhance that experience now do i think that they're going to be perfect with that absolutely not i'd love to get my instruction booklets back i think that would be great for physical consumers but i do feel that stuff like the special editions they did for bayonetta 3 you have the nintendo world championships that really cool physical special edition and i think that if you're looking at it from a digital consumer this is great because it's a $30 game so it's not as expensive as the physical version of the game but if you're looking at it as a physical gamer you want all of those different things so you don't mind spending the extra $30 in order to get all of those physical items so those are the type of things that I like to see you make it an incentive for digital consumers hey this game's a bit cheaper and it's one of those games that probably wouldn't do well normally at a full price game but even if it was like thirty dollars would you go out there and buy it for that but you add in some little different things in there then it becomes far more appealing for you to go out there and pick up the game and i think that nintendo needs to get a little bit better when it comes to other titles it would have been great to see like paper mario the thousand year door get some type of special edition as well but they have had some pretty good things over the years so i can't complain too much on that the legend of zelda 
Tears of the Kingdom had a cool special edition, had a special edition console. So we've gotten some great things over the years. But to me, this is old school gaming. This is something that I want to see. I like to be able to own my games where I actually have the cartridge. I can sell it. I can let a friend borrow it. It's not all digitized and it can't just be taken away from me out of nowhere. Like we've seen before when it comes to digital games, you have it, you own it. And plus, like I said, it's a nice little investment too. You can keep it. And if it ends up becoming a rare game, especially with Nintendo titles, because we've seen over the years that Nintendo games tend to become rare in the future, you have something there. So to me, that's great old school gaming. You get a game, you put it in your system, you play. Yeah, there might be an update for some of them, but some of the games, stuff like Super Mario RPG, there was a little update afterwards, but you just get the game, you put it inside your system, and then you play. Princess Peach Showtime, same thing. Like, pretty much, they're games that doesn't take much to kind of get into, play them, and you don't have to worry about all this nonsense that comes with modern gaming. And I'll also add that because Nintendo actually has a format that's inherently old school with cartridges and you combine that with the fact that you don't need to actually install them like a pc you look at microsoft and sony and what they're doing and yeah you still have the physical games you can still do that but the installing makes it feel very much pc like and not like an actual console because the consoles of old you didn't have to do all of the installing it didn't take up your internal memory when you had a physical game it was actually a real physical game and not an unlock where you're just you know having it to say okay verifying you have the game and it's running off of the system internal memory with the nintendo switch and its success you're going to have real physical games that run off of the actual cartridge that you can play so to me that feels like an old school beacon of hope that feels like it's okay there's actually somebody that wants real physical games and not these titles or not these games that come out and you're just installing it to a hard drive just like a pc i'm playing on console because i don't want it to be like pc even though i have a nice gaming pc to play games and it's awesome but at the same time like i feel like there needs to be an actual distinct console and physical games should run like a real physical game off of that physical media and it's just not happening with the other systems but with the nintendo switch now with the switch 2 coming up it will be happening and i found myself actually not buying some games that have came out stuff like alan wake there's no physical version of alan wake 2 alan wake 2 i should say so i didn't buy the game even though i wanted to check the game out i beat alan wake 1 wasn't my favorite franchise or anything but i was looking at alan wake 2 the reviews look great the game seems like it's really good but there's no physical at all i don't want to spend 60 70 dollars on non physical product overall for me at least so a lot of companies are moving away from the physical a lot of companies are trying to find ways to game you into buying digital and if that's how you like to buy games that's cool but one thing that i think that needs to be said here is that having a balance of both is important i think that consumers always talk about choice having options and choice but sometimes this doesn't really get through to people that are all hardcore all digital it's that the choice is what makes things better for all consumers that is basic economics if you have other retailers that are in competition or at least some type of business for the digital storefronts you can have sales that are physical that can affect digital and vice versa or if you have a system that can play physical games and digital games you can take advantage of both of them as a consumer like i do myself i don't only buy physical sometimes if it's a smaller independent game I do buy the game digitally. I think that that's awesome to do, to pick up and play and have it right on the system. If it's a bigger title, I'm like, okay, I kind of want to have a physical, want to be able to own it for later, whatever happens, you know, sell it later. Maybe it goes up in value, whatever the case is. Or I can take advantage of sales, discounts, and deals when it comes to physical gaming. And that to me is a sign of importance. The fact that Nintendo understands that with their consumer base and they're not trying to move away or trying to get away from physical gaming. And once again, it benefits everyone. When you have the choice and option, that's better than not having the option and giving everything just to Microsoft, Sony, Steam, whatever the case is, right? I think that if you look at it overall, you would always want competition for anything else when it comes to consumer goods. You want competition when it comes to where you buy, let's just say, computers online, right? If you want a new PC, there's different places where you can buy that. If you want to buy a game physical, there's different places where you can buy that. I wouldn't want it 
everything where it's just one place. Or if you want to buy a pair of sunglasses, there's different places you can buy sunglasses or different places you can buy clothes. I would hate it to where if it was just one place, that's the PSN or that's the Xbox store or that's the Nintendo online eShop. I don't want one place just to be able to do things because they can manipulate prices left and right. So to me, it's better to have the option. And I think it keeps everyone when it comes to the consumers and when it comes to the other retailers and when it comes to the console manufacturers, everybody can make their cut and be happy with it when you do have the option. But once again, there's a lot of things that companies are doing to try to circumvent that. But one thing that I have seen here when it comes to old school gaming and old school gamers is that we're not giving up. You'll see a lot of people in the media say, oh, well, people aren't buying physical anymore, but that's not the case. If you look at Nintendo, there's still people buying physical games. Heck, you look at PlayStation, there's still people buying physical games. Yeah, Xbox is kind of cooked when it comes to physical, but they're going down, it seems like, with the Game Pass ship, right, at this point, because things are not necessarily moving the way that Microsoft wants. So you're having vast changes even when companies make incredible games like Hi-Fi Rush. So to me, this is the route to go. The way that Nintendo's doing it, with actually having physical, with having good digital options to the voucher program, things like that. You have the program where whenever you buy a digital game, you get coins that you can use to redeem to get discounts on digital games. Physical people get their physical titles, they get their special editions, and everyone can be happy over all. So right now to me, Nintendo is pretty much the last hope for old school gaming. They're keeping that going there. And I'm hoping that Nintendo continues this because this is definitely good to see in a sea of uncertainty when it comes to physical games with many other people out there. It's good to know that Nintendo's continuing on with this. But what do you guys think when it comes to the old school gaming and when it comes to physical and digital how do you prefer to play your games? Let me know in the comment section below. All right, guys, that wraps it up for this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Please make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you are someone new. Click that notification bell and check out my other Nintendo Switch and RPG videos right here on screen. Thank you for watching and we'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace.